What up? Welcome to my corner. I know you comment and you're like, the title's kind of weird. I'm gonna explain. Welcome back to Candace's Corner episode two. Episode two. Hey. All right. The title's Why I Left the Church. Let's get to it. Okay. So before we start, you religious people, put on your seatbelts because it's gonna be a long ride. All right. So um, a little bit of background about me, right? So I am a preacher's kid. Okay. That means my parents are pastors. My dad is a pastor. My mom is a pastor. But it doesn't just stop there. My grandparents are bishops. My aunt owns her own church. My uncle has their own church. Everybody got churches, bruh. My lineage is basically the whole entire structure of the church, okay? Aunt runs the usher board. Other aunt sings. I just pretty much grew up in church, okay? Um, I probably, well, I know I wasn't conceived in the church, but... Probably right after I was born, we hopped right to church. I'm not gonna lie. So I grew up in church. I've been in church all my life, all right? So it's crazy that I would leave the church. Let me explain. Okay, so when I was in college, um, I was real churchy. I sang in a group. Um, I used to be at church pretty much Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I was in the gospel choir, all things church, because that's what I was taught. So um, after I graduated from college, I went through this depression stage. I'll tell you all about it and how I almost contemplated killing myself. Yeah, I know it's crazy. Um, I'll tell you all about it. It'll be your story time one of these days. And so um, I moved to New Orleans for work. And um, I began to, uh, I was coming out of a little depression stage. So I was looking for churches. And that is the most frustrating thing. Looking for a church is so frustrating, okay? Um, so I was looking for a church. Um, I got into a church. I started serving at this church. And then one day, I don't know what happened, y'all. I just was like, this ain't it. Some name right. Mm -mm, some name right. Some name right. So <laughs> I would, uh, I was singing. I was doing everything I was supposed to be doing. As far as, far as like, I would have been like, if I was somebody else's, like, like they'd have been proud of me, cause you know they always people are proud when you serve the Lord at a young age. They're proud of me, all right. So um, I was singing doing everything I'm supposed to do, which means like every Sunday I would get up and I would sing and I would raise my hands and I would jump around because that's what a worship leader does. And then I would sit down and it would be like I wasn't, that was it. That was it. It was nothing else to it. So one day I was sitting in church and um, I just zoned out. Like I heard the preacher preaching, but like as I looked around, it was just nothing but broken people. And I was just like, what, what, why is we here? What's going on? There was no room for the Holy Spirit to be led. It was like such a structure like we sing and we shout and the dance and they preach and then we go home and it's like it was it, it was like but people were still going home broken so i remember i was sitting there and it was like i wasn't even in the building i was just looking and i was like what's going on so like i just left like i, I just did i didn't tell nobody where i was going i did now the another reason why i did dip was because um i was really frustrated on the church's stance as far as um injustice goes like don't get me started on black lives matter or black people in general i get if the church be silent, I, I want to rob it because I don't understand why the church is silent, but God is never silent. Different convo for a different day, okay? Um, so I left because I was disgusted with the injustice. I didn't understand how the church, who's supposed to be the voice for these things, wasn't speaking. And I was tired of the charade. Like, I was like, this is ridiculous. Like, I'm spending three hours in here. I could be at home watching all of the marvel stuff catching up just getting my life like that could be productive preparing for the it just was a waste of time to me so i stopped going um let's go to like i stopped going maybe like fall of last year um i just took a break i just stopped going like i stopped like, mm, no nope, no more church so i said i left the church i didn't leave god i just left the physical building because i was trying to figure out we weren't accomplishing anything people's biggest testimonies was god didn't turn off their lights if the Lord gave you a job, why you don't pay your bills on time so you would never have to have your lights cut off? That don't make no sense to me. But you was sowing $20 seeds but didn't have $20 to give. That don't make no sense to me. The Bible says if you don't have wisdom, ask or something. Y'all don't... Let me not get started. So I didn't understand. So like, to me, it, I was tired of not accomplishing anything. I was sitting in church and we wasn't accomplishing anything. I was like, I could be working on my dreams. I could be working on my vision. But I'm here listening to you talk about how we going to make it and we still stuck. Y'all been preaching the same sermon since MLK died. Stuck. So I was like, this ain't working for me. This ain't it. So I began to ask questions. I wanted to know who said that 
in order to be anointed, you had to take a class. I asked questions. I wanted to know why we believe the way we believed. And it, what I realized was Christians didn't want to know why they believe the way they just know that it was right. And if you went against the Christian grain, you were damn, you were, you know, you were going to hell. So I think half of them wrote me off and put me in hell. And like, she won't post away from damnation because she asked me too many questions. I did. I had questions about tithing. I had questions about, well, why, why, why? Like, I couldn't understand for the life of me how I was serving God and uh, black people was being killed in the street. I, I was like, I don't, mm. This ain't the God I serve or why pastors wasn't talking about it. I was really baffled. So I just left. I dipped. I was out. I ain't tell nobody where I was going. I did. Every Sunday, I would be in my house. I would be reading my word. And I'd be watching like a Todd Tribbett sermon. But I wasn't going to the church because I couldn't stomach what was going on in there. I couldn't stomach people going home broken. I couldn't stomach the facades and the masks. I couldn't stomach us shouting and nothing was happening. So we would shout. we get a cardio workout in. But still your life was hell through the week. I couldn't stomach that. I couldn't sit through it. So I left. And so, uh... I begin to find Jesus, yo. Like, I think, y'all don't understand. Growing up in church, you know, you, you, you're you taught how to pray. You're taught how to, like, I know how to speak in tongues and fall out. Yep, I know how to pray and intercede. But I didn't know, like, if this faith was really my own. Like, I had to learn how to believe God for myself. It's easy to, you know, hold on to my mom and dad's faith. But I had to find it for myself. So, you know, I just went on this little thing. My sweet little mama, too. She probably was worried. She probably like, oh, Lord, my baby soul. So I begin to ask questions, and I was like, I don't do church people, and I still don't do church folk. Like, I can't, I don't fit with the religious, because I'm not about religious aspects. I'm not about biblical debates, because at the end of the day, like, souls are still here. And plus, on top of that, I didn't want anything to do with Christianity, because we didn't have a good rep. Y'all think most Christians, what, voted for Trump? We don't like gays. <sighs> what else y'all think? We steal, which isn't true. Like, not all Christians do that, and but the Christianity in a whole had a bad rep, so I didn't want nothing to do with them people. And so I was just like, no. So um, I posted a post maybe like two weeks ago about like how I left the church and I found Jesus. And I actually had read this book called Searching for Sunday, which I think you should. If you're on the verge of leaving the church, read it. Um, and so um, I said, no, nah, I don't want nothing to do with that. I don't. I don't want it. I, I didn't say I didn't want anything to do with God. I just didn't want anything to do with the physical walls of the church. I didn't want nothing to do with it, period. So for like seven months, I sat home. I read all 66 books of the Bible. Um, and I began to know God and I realized that God ain't concerned about half the crap we're concerned about. It's overly complicated, legalistic things. That ain't even what his word says and how we have misconstrued words and how we preach these pro prosperity sermons. In five days, you're going to come out. Sis, you might not come out in five days. You're still going to be shouting and screaming. Oh, you know, if you sow $32.99, the Lord will bless you. Whether you sow this seed or not, if the Lord wanted you to be blessed, he'd bless you. That's the reality of it. I don't know why it's overly complicated. I don't know. So that's why I left. Um, and I began to find Jesus. And I began to see that he is dope. He ain't extra like these people in here. And, you know, um, the church people love to diagnose something. So, you know, when I was going through this, oh, she got church hurt. Explain to me what church hurt is. Explain. Because if I fall on my face at work, it's not called work hurt. It's just called hurt. It's just pain. Church folk love to give a little identity to something. Ain't no such thing as church hurt. It's just hurt. No, I wasn't hurt by the church. The church didn't hurt me. They disappointed me, but I won't hurt. And they was like, you just need to be healed. No, what you need to do is you need to get in your word and ask some questions. Because if the Lord came back to this church today, would he be pleased? Think on it. If the Lord came and sat in your service, would he be pleased? Yes, y'all shouted. Yes, y'all fell out. But would he be pleased? That's why I left. So I stopped sewing my ties. I stopped sewing seeds. I stopped showing up. I was just chilling. And even in the midst of all that, God was still blessing me and opening doors because I was getting to know him and I was seeking him. And I, yo, I'm closer to him now than I ever have been in my whole life. So I understand why people leave the church. I understand why people stay. I, I understand this is a spiritual journey. Find your journey. All I'm saying is you got to learn to love people where they are and you have to learn to let people be who they are. They don't need you to coach them. Let them let Jesus work on them. You work on yourself and let Jesus work on them, okay? And so, yeah, that's why I left the church. Um, I, uh, I'm i coming back to the church. Like, I, I started going back to church. Um, I go, well, today's Sunday, so I went today. And I go every Sunday. And I'm slowly starting to realize, you know, like, there's no such thing as a perfect church. It's not. It doesn't exist. As much as I would love for it to exist, it doesn't exist. Um, and I'm learning that church is, is about where I can serve and how I serve and um, the beauty of who he is and you know 
you got to read the sermons for yourself after the, he preaches. I'm not with that word of faith stuff at all. Like, I'm not about prosperity gospel. Um, and I'll tell you why in another video, but I ain't about it. So, um, yeah, so I'm at this beautiful place in my life where, you know, I see God for who he is and how he uses the foolish things of the world. And I see how everything molds. And, you know, so that's why I say I left the church and I kind of, like, left Christianity. I'm not... I don't like the time term Christian because these people here, it could just anybody be a Christian nowadays. I don't like that term. I'm a believer. I believe in God. I believe he died on the cross. I believe that he wrote, I, Jesus is real. I know the Lord is real to me. Oh, yes, he's real. I know he's real. Okay. I know. <laughs> Ain't no way he ain't real. But I just know that I left the church and uh, I'm coming back. So, yeah, this is my spiritual journey. And it's a journey indeed. Um, and I hope that if you're thinking about leaving the church or maybe you left, maybe you figure out, you know, get to know who he is and figure out where he wants you to be. It's a beautiful place. Um, it's scary to be broken in the church. It's scary. Church is scary. These are different things. But faith is amazing. Faith walk is amazing. It's, it's a journey. And I think that, you know, wherever you are, God is there. So it ain't that much extra. Just meet him where he is and let him meet you where you are and begin to have this intimate relationship with him and watch him change your life. So, yeah, the religious, you guys can calm down because I still love the Lord. Y'all love to ask me that question. Do you still love Jesus? Do you still love him? That's the most. Do you love him? Okay. Worry about, worry about thine self. Thine own self. That should have been a commandment. Mind thine own business. Worry about thine own self. Okay. So, look. I'm glad you guys sat in the corner with me today. I'm glad you guys listened to my story about me leaving the church. And pray for me, man, as I continue to walk this journey. Like, it's a journey for sure. I don't know what's going on and why it's happening, but it's a journey. Um, So, I hope you guys come back and sit with me in the corner next time I do this video. All right. We're out. All right.